I am reading a scene from Rogues and Vagabonds. It is a Sunday afternoon in the house of Miss Fuchs in Soho. Mrs. Pottage, Nancy O'Finn's old landlady, has arrived to look after Nancy's little daughter while her mother is out of work. Nancy was wondering if she had enough money left to pay the cab now and Miss Fuchs's bill tomorrow morning. However, she decided to accept Mrs. Pottage's offer. Now, who is going to fetch the four-wheeler, Mrs. Pottage wanted to know, when the packing was finished. Shall I give a holler to her landladyship upstairs? Ask Miss Fuchs to fetch a cab, Nancy exclaimed. Why, she... Words failed her to express what Miss Fuchs would do. But, uh, what is this Miss Fuchs? demanded Mrs. Pottage indignantly. Three hapeth of nothing from what I could make out of her. Still, rather than create a row on a Sunday afternoon, I'll go and fetch the four-wheeler myself. I'll stand in Shaftesbury Avenue till one comes along. There's one thing. The police won't be so likely to take me for a curbstone fairy as what they would Lady Fuchs. Oh, dear, oh, dear. Well, I'm bothered if some people nowadays don't give themselves as much airs as if they was Margaret, Ramsgate and Brighton all rolled into one. In about ten minutes, Mrs. Pottage returned, followed by a burly old cab driver in a dark blue beaver coat with a treble cape and a shiny bowler hat. I've brought a most obliging driver along with me, she proclaimed. The first cab I got, the fellow wouldn't leave his horse at the corner to come and help down with the luggage. Afraid of his horse, he said. I suppose you're afraid it'll fall down and never stand up again if you let go of the reins, I said. Never heard of a horse running away, I suppose, he answered back, very sarcastic. What, said I, that poor Skellington run away? Why, it couldn't walk away. It might fade away, yes. And if it didn't run away of itself, I'm sure nobody wouldn't ever run away with it. Not even a cat's meat man. And they'll run away with anything as looks a little bit like flesh and blood. But that horse of yours don't. That horse of yours looks more like a clothes horse than a real animal. Only I'd be very afraid to hang a towel on its back. Fear it might break in half under the weight. And with that I walked on and found this driver, who's been most obliging, I'm sure. But now a greater obstacle to the departure of the luggage presented itself, for Miss Fuchs appeared. And what is the meaning of this, she demanded. Nancy explained why her luggage was going away. Then perhaps you'll pay my weekly bill, Miss O'Finn, before you remove your boxes, said Miss Fuchs. My bill will be paid tomorrow morning before I leave. Yes, but I'm not in the habit of permitting my lodgers to remove their luggage until their bills are paid, Miss Fuchs insisted. Mrs. Pottage gasped. Well, of all the impudence I ever did hear, well, I passed the remark to the policeman that you looked like a pottage shrimp. But shrimp sauce is more what you ought to be called. It's easy to see what you are, Miss Fuchs let out venomously. The sort of woman you are is plain to anyone who's sharp and has eyes. It is easy to see what I am, Mrs. Pottage agreed, because I'm a decent made woman. But it's far from easy to see what you are, let me tell you. Very far from easy. Because you aren't as big as a second helping of underdone mutton at an eating house. You may have eyes, so's a needle. You may be sharp. So's a needle, and I wouldn't care to look for you in a haystack any more than what I would a needle, and that's the solid truth I'm telling you. You asked for it, ma'am, and now you've had it, and if you'll kindly stand on one side, you won't get carried out with the luggage like a speck of dust off of your own dusty banister. This luggage don't leave my house before my account's been settled, not if I have to fetch in a policeman to you. Fetch a policeman, Mrs. Pottage jeered, well, for a woman who looks like last night's buttonhole, or a sucked sweet as a kid spat out on the pavement, you've got a tidy nerve. I'm quite willing to pay your bill, Miss Fuchs, if you suspect I'm trying to give you the slip, Nancy said. Not at all, Mrs. Pottage interposed. It's beyond reason giving in to such as she. Let her call this policeman we've heard so much about. And it's my opinion he'll laugh in her face. That is, if he could tell it was her face, which I don't think. You vulgar, impertinent woman, Miss Fuchs ejaculated. Yes, thank goodness I am a woman, Mrs. Pottage retorted. And thank goodness you can recognize me as such. 
which is more than what I could recognize you. Not if I was looking at you with two telescopes at once. Why, if I was you, I'd be afraid to go out alone in case I got took by a showman for a performing flea. A nine days wonder you never got picked up by a sparrow. But there, I suppose even a sparrow knows what isn't good for him. To what heights of invective Mrs. Pottage might have risen was never to be known, because Nancy insisted on paying Miss Fuchs her bill, which enabled her to retreat to her own room and cease to oppose the departure of the night. But there, perhaps it was well, said Mrs. Pottage, or I might have been tempted to say something a little bit rude.